I was speaking with my mate Ali from the pod, he's from Pakistan, and he was telling me stories of how in Pakistan they have laws against blasphemy, where if you show contempt towards God, you get sentenced to death. And they're like defo charges here, you have to prove you didn't. Prove that you just didn't think about Muhammad with a mullet. I can't! Apostate, send him to Allah! You can explain to him why you thought this was funny. And that got me thinking about how lucky we are to live in a country where that can't happen. But then I walked past Australia's version of a mosque, a diggers, and I saw scores of Aussies worshipping their god, a very ancient Chinese god in fact, a god that promises prosperity, luck and riches, and unlike Muhammad, I can depict our prophet, Cha Ching. Try the chicken of Parmigiana, it will bring you good luck. And that's when I realised, holy shit, gambling is the dominant religion in Australia, and it's profit be profit, yo. We are the gambling capital of the world. I mean, we remember our fallen heroes by having a punt. So naturally, everyone has a childhood memory in this country of their grandma saying, I won $80 at the pokies last night, Timmy. I lost 300, but I won 80. So I bought you some Rose's chocolates, the third best chocolates available at Woolies. We have the highest gambling losses in the world. The next two countries on the list are Hong Kong and Singapore, two places where I swear to God, like 50% of the economy is based around being the set of a casino and spy movies. And as mentioned earlier, Australians prefer a much more low key place of worship. Clash. Those are our grand cathedrals. These are our pews and prayer rugs. And just like Pakistan with Islam, the operators of these pokies do not tolerate apostasy. They do put up with a lot of other shit though. So today I want to tell you the tale of one such apostate. An apostate to Australia's state religion of gambling, Troy Stoles. He used to work for Clubs New South Wales, one of the most powerful pro pokies lobby groups in the world. He saw up close arguably criminal and corrupt behaviour, and it eventually became too much for his conscience to bear, so he did the right thing. He went to the independent MP Andrew Wilkie and disclosed an internal document that detailed the shocking rates of money laundering through pokies machines, because get ready for this. Anti-money laundering compliance. With the almost 800 clubs New South Wales members there are, at best, is between 5 and 10%. That means at least 90% of clubs New South Wales members are very likely involved in some form of money laundering. Can you imagine if 90% of laundromats didn't comply with money laundering procedures? I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be long until we banned laundromats and everyone was walking around in filthy clothes and... Oh wait, that's just Dapto. Mate, here's your trick, right? If you walk around long enough, the rain will wash your clothes for you. I've never washed me f***ing car too. Never wash your Honda, never wash your pants. The difference is, laundromats don't have some gigantic peak body lobbying behind them. Unless of course you count Big Kev, but he's more of a standover man. Plus he's dead. So just like all cases involving whistleblowers in Australia, it's not the criminal behaviour that the whistleblower reports that gets punished, it's the whistleblower. And in this case, Troy's not just a whistleblower, he's committed blasphemy. Not only was Andrew Wilkie prevented by all the sellout politicians in Parliament from tabling the document, but Clubs New South Wales launched legal action against Troy for going to a democratically elected representative for help. And this is an old boring legal action either, this is deliberately vicious personal legal action perpetrated by Clubs New South Wales to send the message, shut your mouth or we'll shut it for you. I mean, honestly. Who'd have thought people who profit off of human misery for a living could be such meanies? They've demanded that Troy set aside 150k from the sale of his home for lawyers. See, what an evil system where the powerful can just drag an individual through endless legal fees until they lose everything from the crime of reporting crimes. It's not even a question of who's right, it's a question of how deep your pockets are and even then, even when the game is that rigged in their favour, they still cheat. Troy attempted to crowdfund his defence, but Clubs New South Wales demanded he take the GoFundMe down and return the money he raised, claiming that he was soliciting money by misleading people. Yeah, what a pure mountain of morality to stand on from the people whose business is this. Yeah, you don't have an addiction, you're an archaeologist and you're um, uncovering Tutankhamun's riches with your trusty assistant, Reverend John Flynn. Let's get busy! 
Clubs New South Wales also demanded that Troy give them the logins to his private email accounts, hand over his personal computers, mobile phones, hard drives, USBs. What's next? His mixtapes of his up and coming rap album, City of Troy? That's what you get for trying to prevent money laundering. During the first eight months of the pandemic, where industries and businesses were all feeling the full force of a recession on their back, New South Wales was staring down the barrel of a health crisis, a housing crisis. Guess which lobby group got the best treatment? Clubs New South Wales, of course. Bruz himself gave Clubs New South Wales more access to his office than any other entity during the first eight months of the pandemic. Think about that. During one of the greatest crises of our lifetime, instead of meeting with healthcare peak bodies, scientific groups, economic think tanks, homeless charities, or God forbid, heeding the warnings of people from Wilcannia, the Deputy Premier met with the entity probably responsible for making more people homeless than any other. And for what? To help clubs in their campaign against a cashless gambling card. And campaign against who? John Barillaro's own colleague, Victor Dominello, the customer service minister. Dominello had been attempting to implement a cashless gambling card in order to hinder the money laundering reported by Troy. But for some inexplicable reason, it appears Barillaro really didn't want to prevent money laundering, hitting back at the proposal publicly. Our pubs and clubs are at the heart of our communities and have won the brunt of the COVID restrictions and the economic shockwave. Now is the time to support this sector, not strangle it with the expensive red tape. When you use that amount of poetic license to characterize a parasitic industry as being the heart of communities and laws made to prevent crimes as red tape, it really can be turned back on you, can't it, John? Friendly Jordi's videos are at the heart of our communities and have worn the brunt of the COVID restrictions and economic shockwave. Now is the time to support this sector, not strangle it with expensive red tape. How's vexatious criminal and civil actions plus six months of surveillance from a terror unit for red tape, John? I guess now's as good a time as any to say, go support us on Patreon. We've got a better return on investment than Clubs New South Wales pokies. Anyway, because of Dominello actually attempting to govern for the people and not himself, John hates him. In fact, earlier this year, John texted Dominello, You're a dead set dick. Do your f***ing job. And yes, the job Bruz was referring to was stop f***ing with f***ing clubs New South Wales just ignore their dodgy shit that's how you do your job but the real reason I think Job Barillaro is so nasty towards Victor Dominello is I think John's racist against Italians hmm I do in fact you know what I think Dominello should sue Giovanni for defamation dead said dick is that in reference to the fact that Italian men have dicks that's brought Dominello into ridicule and contempt. Also, Victor, call the cops on John as he menaced and harassed you using a carrier service. Along with serving as another beautiful example of John's delectable hypocrisy in suing me for calling him a scrotum, which by the way, you can get the official keychains commemorating that moment at friendlygeordies.com. But he's suing me for calling him a scrotum while at the same time calling his colleagues dicks. This little incident should highlight the awesome power of the pokies lobby over governments. They can cause mini civil wars in the state government over them following the law. In fact, they're used to owning governments. So when the power is challenged by someone like Troy, who did nothing but expose clubs own corruption, they lose their shit. It's getting to the point where the lawyers for Clubs New South Wales are begging the judge to impose gag orders on Troy to prevent you, the public, from knowing anything. Which means two things. Clubs New South Wales hate Sun Life, and they want to send a message to anyone who speaks out. Well, here's the thing. I can also send messages, and my message is, you launder money, you maliciously prosecute employees, you profit off impoverishing ordinary Australians, and we will hold you accountable in the court of public opinion. I don't want to interfere with the court process, but I think it's my duty to let people know how evil clubs New South Wales are. So until they drop the suit on Troy, I want you guys to use your freedom of speech to ask repeatedly on clubs New South Wales social media, why won't they hashtag free Troy? And why are they so shady about their money laundering practices? I've linked their social media accounts in the description. Make as many memes as you can. Post it in your local Facebook groups. Spread the message that Clubs New South Wales facilitate money laundering and take people talking about it more seriously than stopping it. Don't stop spreading that message until they drop the suit against Troy. Or, at the very least, someone ask him, are you Slavoj Zizek? Anyway, to play us out, here's Spanion explaining how evil pokies are. Enjoy. <laughs> Here's my review. Shittest poker machine ever. The whole pub, shittest pub ever. They think you can tell you when to use your phone. Wake up. 
Anyway, that's my review. I hate it. I hate pokies. That's why I don't play it. I could have bought a pair of Asics. That's money in the bin. If you play pokies, you're a f***ing spinner. Please share and comment below. Come in.